So the idea of acids and bases is probably one of the most important concepts in all of chemistry. And here, what we are going to do is define what do we mean by acids and bases. When most people talk about acids and bases, they generally are referring to what's called the Arrhenius theory of acids and bases. What that means is that an acid puts H plus when dissolved in water. And here H plus is called the hydrogen ion or a proton. So if you think about it, uh, hydrogen as an, a single element is uh, a proton and an electron. So if we remove that one electron, really all we have left is a proton. So literally H plus is a proton floating around solution. So the classic example of this is HCl. So this is an important idea because, especially when we do nomenclature of uh, compounds, you'll see that an acid is defined as something that has an H all the way to the left, and it's something that puts H plus into solution when it's disassociated. Also here, the idea of base is when something disassociates or dissolves in water, it's putting OH minus into solution, and here OH minus is called the hydroxide ion. And that's generally what people are referring to. So an acid puts H plus, a uh, base puts OH minus into solution. Um, but we're going to find out pretty quick that the, the Arrhenius theory is not complete. It doesn't explain certain things that are basic. So we're going to have to expand our uh, idea. One of the other ideas that we're going to be building off is neutralization. So here pretty quick we're going to be reacting acids and bases together and a lot of the times what is happening is our hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions interact with each other so here we can see a simple reaction of an acid and a base it goes on to make water so we need to remember that H plus plus OH minus actually makes water so it's a idea that I like to remember that H2O even though we write it um, like this actually is made up of an H plus and OH minus. So this is going to become more important later on when we start doing titrations and other reactions with acids and bases. So in a neutralization, what's happening is the hydroxide and the hydrogen ion are interacting with each other to uh, basically cancel each other out to make water. So one of the main problems with the Arrhenius theory of acids and bases is that it does not explain how ammonia is a base. And also the Arrhenius theory completely neglects the fact that water is involved. And here when we start looking at acid and base equilibrium, we're going to find out that water is actually a very important part of the equilibriums involved in acids and bases. So with this to help explain why say uh, ammonia acts as a base, we need to expand our definitions of acids and bases. So from here on out in chemistry, and if you ever talk to a chemist, when they talk about acids and bases, typically what they are referring to is what's called the bronsted lowry theory of acids and bases. So in terms of an acid, in the bronsted lowry theory, it's pretty much the same as with the Arrhenius theory. It's an acid is something that produces H+, plus. But instead of just putting it into solution, it's defined as uh, something that transfers an H plus to um, a different species, in this case, water. So when we look at HCl, the H plus, or the hydrogen ion from our acid, HCl, is being transferred to water in this case. So our acid is defined as a proton donor, something that can give up H plus to something else. What that something else is uh, can vary, but in here and in most acid reactions, the acid will be uh, transferring the H plus to water. And so you can see here the difference in the bronsted lowry theory, water is involved in our um, acid reaction. So in this case, HCl is the proton donor, so it's giving up H+. But now H2, uh, H2O water is a proton acceptor, and we're going to see what that means. And then also we begin to see uh, this new spe species, H3O+, which is called the hydronium ion. And we're going to find out that, that this species is pretty important as we go on with acids and bases. 
So the big difference here in the bronsted lowry theory of acids and bases comes when we look at a, a base. And now a base is defined as a proton acceptor. So in the Arrhenius theory, it was something that produced OH minus. So here it is a proton acceptor. So that's going to give us a broader definition of a base. So when we look at ammonia, ammonia does not have a hydroxide ion in it to, to give up to act as a base, but it can react with water. And if we remember that water um, is made up of H plus and OH minus, what happens is the um, ammonia acts as a proton acceptor, the water gives up a proton, and what this ends up doing is producing OH minus and ammonium. So ammonia is the proton acceptor, and in this case, water is the proton donor. And you're beginning to see kind of the interesting aspects of water where it can act as a proton acceptor in some cases and it can act as a proton donor in some cases. So we will talk about um, water in that uh, case here pretty quick. So we can see that water is actually made up of H plus and OH minus. So here, when it gives up a proton, what's left over is OH minus. And I guess uh, this negative charge should be right here next to my hydroxide. Um, so for most of general chemistry, the bronsted lowry theory of acids and bases is going to uh, be the one that we use to describe uh, what's going on. So an acid is a proton donor, a uh, base is a proton acceptor. So there is one other theory uh, we will just mention. We typically do not use that too much in general chemistry, but for those of you that are going on to organic chemistry, it's a very important idea. So we get into what's called the Lewis definition of acids and bases. And here in this case, we're just expanding our definition of acids and bases even further. And especially in organic chemistry, this helps us get an idea of how two species interact. So we're just going to define it here, but we really won't see it too much in general chemistry. So with a Lewis acid, that is an electron pair acceptor. And when it accepts the electron pair, uh, what we do is we form a bond. So when we were looking at the Arrhenius and the bronsted lowry theory, we really didn't look at the bonds that were being formed. And they do, and we will look at that later on, but with the Lewis definition, it's very important. So a Lewis acid accepts an electron pair and forms a bond, where a Lewis base donates an electron pair to form a bond. And so with an electron pair, um, we are talking about lone pair electrons that you probably uh, covered when we were talking about Lewis structures. So you can see where the Lewis definition comes in. And what happens when we form this new bond is we create what's called an acid-base addict. So here we can see with a reaction of H plus and water to form hydronium that even though we uh, a lot of the time we just draw it out in a shorthand form, in reality the uh, water is acting as a Lewis base, donating electrons to the Lewis acid, which is H plus, and this actually forms a oxygen-hydrogen bond there. And that's one of the important ideas with the Lewis acid is that there's a bond forming. So this helps us understand how electrons move and uh, reactions form bonds. So another classic example involves uh, boron trifluoride. Uh, here, boron is a species that can have a violated octet. So here with the three bonds around it, it only has six electrons but it would still love to gain another two electrons to get an octet. So here you can see we are getting quite far away from our traditional idea of an acid and a base, but it still falls under our Lewis definition. So here we have ammonia, which has a, a set of lone pair electrons. It's acting as a Lewis base, a lone pair uh, electron donor. And here BF3 is acting as a Lewis acid, so it is a um, electron pair acceptor. So here, and when you get into organic chemistry, they show the movement of electrons by uh, representing it with an arrow that these lone pair electrons are being uh, donated to boron, and we end up forming a nitrogen boron bond, and also we end up forming an adduct. So in this case, we have 
uh, positive and negatively charged species. And these can um, go on to have other reactions that we'll talk about more in organic chemistry.